International Women's Day, and who better to join me than Susie Weiss Fishman, the co-founder of nail polish manufacturing company OPI. Susie, thanks so much for joining me. OPI really set the precedent for nail color, nail art, which has become such a big part of our self-care culture. Since it is International Women's Day, how does your company embody female empowerment? But first, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And uh, as far as OPI, most of our workers are women. So um, it has always been a priority at OPI to, uh, to work with women, to elevate women, and uh, to build relationships all over the world uh, with women through nail color. And you have such an amazing story, immigrant, a second generation Holocaust survivor. How were you able to leverage those differences and become the powerhouse businesswoman that you are today? A very unique story in the professional beauty industry. Um, I'm an immigrant to the U United States. I came in 1969 and I am first generation of uh, parents who survived the Holocaust. So, um, you know, I learned quickly that in this country, anything is possible. The one thing you must have is passion, which, uh, and perseverance and hard work. So, uh, which are part of who I am. Um, OPI started in the dental business. Uh, myself and my brother-in-law were in the dental supply business. And quickly we realized that artificial nail extensions were very, very popular in the early 80s. Uh, nail salons were popping up all over the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, doing artificial nail extensions called acrylic, which is very similar chemistry to making dentures. So, tip, well. <laughs> and... Um, uh, we said, oh, it's so much more fun to work with nail technicians. And uh, the first products were for salon service uh, called the rubber band special to do uh, nail extensions called the acrylic nails, where you build the nail over your own to extend it out. And then quickly we got into other products for services. And then in 1989, there was a huge leap where OPI got into nail color. And that really took the company into the consumer's eye. That's amazing. And, you know, you mentioned what worked for you and how you became successful, but in the same vein, what sort of challenges or, or barriers to entry did you face as a woman in your position? Because the beauty industry can be a pretty tough business. Yes, absolutely tough. And uh, I think the biggest challenge was for me to be taken seriously. You know, whenever I went to speak, people would say, oh, the nail polish lady is here to talk like the nail polish lady, like, but once, you know, I had the, in the beginning, and I also had to grow my confidence. I mean, I grew with OPI, Susie grew and OPI grew. And the more confident I became, the better I became and the better my, my presentations were. So once I gained the confidence to speak, I was taken seriously and I was invited to speak to more uh, companies and uh, universities and to tell the story and, and to inspire young people that if I can do it, I always say anybody can. And to follow up on that, you mentioned that you co-founded OPI along with your brother-in-law, George. I'm curious, especially as the company really took off, was he ever treated differently than you because he was a man or were the expectations different when it came to your responsibilities within the company due to your gender? In the beginning, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But again, um, you know, family, the dynamics are can be great or a little bit difficult. I mean, we had very good dynamic and uh, we kind of quickly understood that each of us has strengths and weaknesses. George was of course building the infrastructure and I didn't know anything about machinery where I was much more into color. I mean, all my life, I love color, fashion, uh, decorating. I mean, that's just who I am as a person. And that was wonderful as far as my uh, contribution to the growth of the company. Yeah, and the colors of OPI nail polish are certainly iconic. I know I am due for my own polish very, very soon, but let's talk about the future of OPI because you guys are venturing into the metaverse by partnering with Xbox for a new spring 2022 collection. It's a unique partnership, but also a big sign of the times as more companies really lean into those virtual worlds. So why Xbox and what does this mean for where you wanna take this company moving forward? Well, collaborations have been a huge part of OPI because 
we always want first to excite the consumer, second to be really part of her life, whether it was a paint color on the wall that she could match to her favorite OPI nail color, whether it was a collaboration with Dell computers, so your laptop could be uh, customized to have your favorite OPI nail lacquer, whether it was watching your favorite movie, listening to your favorite artist. So OPI, I wanted, and OPI is a company, we wanted OPI to be part of uh, a woman's life wherever she is or whatever she does. And uh, as you know, uh, geographic locations were a huge part of the collections for spring, summer, and for fall, winter. And because of the pandemic, unfortunately, a lot of us were unable to travel. So we decided to travel to the virtual world. And the partnership with Xbox has really been amazing. It was so on point, a lot of there are a lot of female who are gamers. And of course, all day when you are gaming or typing or a Zoom call, your nails, you can always look at your nails. It makes you, you know, happy, uh, changes your look and your outlook. You and nail art, I mean the the growth, the expansion of nail art on nails for self-expression is unbelievable. I mean, it really has been amazing and it didn't stop uh, throughout the pandemic. So Xbox, we're hugely excited. It's been really tapping into a whole new audience of, of uh, female gamers. So um, here we are. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you mentioned the pandemic a few times. What kind of impact did you guys see to your business during that time as the bulk of nail salons were shut down? And I know you mentioned Xbox and that was sort of a pivot, but how else were you able to evolve the company as a result? The biggest thing was for and women were doing their nails at home and uh, manicures or pedicure is to have the nail color available to them. So set up retailers that were able to ship the nail color on demand quickly, such as Amazon, Alta, other retailers that had, you know, have e-commerce. And uh, that was a huge, or your nail treatment or your top coat, you know, things that women were continually using. So it was very, very important to be able to reach them with the products on a timely manner, because as you say, so many of the salons were closed. I remember going back to the salon the first time and having a service done outside, but I was so happy. I was so happy to go and to have that, you know, that little getaway kind of my, my one hour of myself. And the good thing, that instant gratification that you get when your manicure and pedicure are done, honestly, that feeling, I, you know, started OPI 40 years ago. That feeling hasn't stopped. I, I agree. That first manicure amid the pandemic was really something else. I still remember that feeling too. But another hurdle that we're grappling with today is inflation. It's really hit pretty much every section of our economy. How are you guys battling inflationary pressures, especially since getting your nails done, buying nail polish, that's often considered discretionary spending for a lot of Americans that might be trying to save right now? But not raising the prices right now. I mean, trying to keep the prices um, uh, without, you know, having to to increase them is a big uh, is a big part of the service that the salons are providing, and that they can also keep the prices without increasing them to make sure that they don't lose the clients um, in between services and sometimes the the customer does stretch her you know her next follow up manicure or pedicure maybe an extra week maybe an extra few days just to uh, to make sure that she doesn't stop going but maybe stretching it a little bit so those are some of the things that OPI can do to to help in these infl inflationary times and it feels like the competition in this space has really heated up, especially with the emergence of new nail care brands like Olive and June, the rise of social media, TikTok. How has OPI kept up with competitors in order to remain a leader in this space? Well, several things. First, as I mentioned, we continue to excite the consumer through uh, collaborations. You know, OPI being a 40 year brand can be considered an old brand. But we're, we're, we're new, we're exciting, we're always changing colors and the names. I mean, who doesn't, when I meet somebody and they find out who I am, 
they recite to me at least a dozen names of their favorite nail colors. We made nail color personal to women. We made it sexy, aspirational. When times are good or bad, they wear nail color. And they remember those special occasions in their life, what OPI nail color they wore. It really is something very, very special. And I think that differentiates OPI. We've been in movies, in Hollywood. I mean, OPI has really been everywhere. And our goal is to continue to excite the consumer for the next 40 years. You're so right. Lincoln Park after dark, that defined my high school experience. I got to throw that out there. But finally, before we let you go, what's the number one piece of advice you would give to women who are looking to further and advance their careers? Um, be, be, uh, have passion for whatever you do in life. Be passionate because, and be authentic. Be authentic to who you are. You know, I always said, I am who I am, but I have passions, have patience, perseverance, and make decisions. One of my superpowers for my success has been that I made decisions. Sometimes they may not be good, but you move on. And as my dad would say, catch the next train. <laughs> I love that. Catch the next train. Susie Weiss-Fishman, the co-founder of OPI. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you.